Hello, my name is Zach Guerra. In this 10 minute video, I'm going to introduce by way of illustrations the concept of chirality, naming and labeling chiral molecules, a neat characteristic of chiral compounds, and why chirality matters to us. Chirality. Chirality is defined as when an object's mirror image is not superimposable upon itself. This may be a bit difficult to understand, so let me illustrate by using a few objects to explain. Imagine this is a mirror. Let's say we have an object and its reflection. Let's take a drumstick and its reflection. The question we have to ask ourselves is this. Is the reflection superimposable on its object? In this case it is. The reflection is superimposable upon its object. Let's try another example, this time spoons. Here we have a spoon and its reflection. Checking to see if the reflection is superimposable upon its object, we see that the reflection is superimposable upon its object. Let's go back to the definition of chirality. Chirality is when an object's mirror image is not superimposable upon itself. In both examples, the reflections have been superimposable upon their objects. Therefore, those objects are not chiral. We can also call them achiral. Let's just try one more simple example. This time, let's try a pair of gloves. So here we have the object and its reflection. When we try to superimpose the reflection on its object, we find that we are not able to. No matter what we try, we cannot do it. The problem here is that the thumbs will not line up. In this case, the reflection is not superimposable upon the object. Now let's take a look at chirality and how it applies to modern chemistry. Let's bring back out our good friend the mirror and a placeholder for an object and its reflection. We will put in one hypothetical molecule in its reflection. The reflection is a mirror image of its object. Is the reflection superimposable upon its object? Yes. It is, therefore it is not a chiral molecule. Let's replace one of the atoms on our molecule object and its reflection. The reflection matches the object, but are they superimposable? Yes, therefore the molecule is not chiral. Let's try that again and replace one more atom on our molecule object and its reflection. I'm going to replace this red atom with a striped orange one. The reflection matches its object with its yellow and striped orange atoms. When we try to superimpose the reflection on the object, we find that just like with the gloves, we are not able to do it. Just like with the gloves, the reflection is not superimposable upon its object. This is an example of a chiral molecule. Now let's switch gears and talk about a cool effect of chiral compounds. Chiral compounds have an effect on polarized light. But what is polarized light? Let's take an ordinary light source, such as a light bulb. If we analyze closely what is being emitted from that light, what we will find is that tiny packets of energy, photons, travel away from the source. These photons travel in waves, which are oriented in planes, but ordinary light does not travel in just one plane. It travels in many, many different planes. If we pass ordinary light through a polarized lens, the lens has the effect of removing virtually all but one plane of light. By doing this, we can create polarized light, or light that travels in only one plane. Scientists found that when polarized light is passed through a cylinder containing a chiral compound that the plane of light gets rotated. To an observer looking directly into the light path, it would appear that the plane of light had rotated after passing through the chiral compound. There is one more thing we need to know about chirality, how to name and label them. This is a difficult concept to understand, so we are going to have to illustrate it with a three-dimensional model. For this illustration, let's say each different colored gumdrop is a unique atom. We will assign each atom a different atomic number like this. Red equals 1, green equals 6, orange equals 7, and yellow equals 8. Let's bring out the last molecule we made, since it was a chiral molecule. 
are molecules made up of a green central atom, two red atoms, one striped orange atom, and one yellow atom. Labeling chiral molecules takes a little bit of three-dimensional technique. Start by locating the lowest atomic numbered atom. Grab the molecule by that atom and hold it up to your face like a flower. Next, locate the atom with the highest atomic number and rotate it to the top. Locate the atom with the next highest atomic number. In this case, it's the striped orange. And finally, the lowest atomic numbered atom. Notice the direction from the highest to the second highest to the lowest. In this case, it's clockwise or to the right. The way to remember how to label this is, because it went to the right, we give it an R dash. Now let's try this again and use the mirror image of our chiral molecule. The mirror image is comprised of a green center, two red, a striped orange, and a yellow atom. We start the labeling process by grabbing the atom with the lowest atomic number and holding it up to our face like a flower. Locating the atom with the highest atomic number, we rotate it to the top. Locate the atom with the second highest atomic number and then locate the lowest. We move our finger from the atom with the highest atomic number to the second highest to the lowest atomic number, noting the direction. In this case, the direction was counterclockwise or to the left. When the direction is to the left, we denote it with an S. There's one more thing I like about these high-tech molecule models. You can eat them! You might ask yourself, why is this important? Well, nature provides carbohydrates and amino acids that are chiral. That means there are, or could conceptually be, R and S enantiomers. For example, we all know from biology that some plants make a simple sugar called glucose. When we eat it, it tastes sweet. In fact, plants make R glucose. It is possible through modern chemistry to synthetically make S glucose in the laboratory. One might ask, so what good are the enantiomers that our body cannot use? One characteristic of S-glucose is that when we eat it, our bodies do not recognize it and cannot break it down to use it for energy. At the same time, S-glucose does taste sweet to our tongues. Our tongues do not need to break glucose down to provide us the sensation of sweet, but our body does need to break it down to provide energy. Putting this all together, one possibility would be to use S-glucose as an artificial sweetener. Our tongues taste the sweetness of the sugar, our bodies miss the calories. We get all the benefits and none of the harm. That is pretty cool and it explains one of the important reasons why chirality matters. In this video, we learned how to label a chiral molecule in its non-superimposable mirror image. We learned that we can name them as R and S. R molecules are such that the order of the atoms facing us goes from highest atomic number to lowest atomic number in clockwise or to the right direction. S molecules are such that the order of the atoms facing us goes from highest atomic number to lowest atomic number in a counterclockwise or to the left direction. Biologists and biochemists often use the symbols D and L instead of R and S, but in this case, the assignment of D and L has to do with the direction that the pure molecule rotates polarized light. As an example of how chiral chemistry matters, we can refer to an example we all probably have right in our own homes. If we look closely at the label of a vitamin E supplement called tocotrienol, we see that the D molecules are provided. One might ask if there are any L molecules. To the answer to this is, the majority of the time, nature only creates one enantiomer and only one is active in the biological processes. This is also true for man-made products like pharmaceuticals. Chirality is the key to how things react in the body, therefore only one enantiomer is found in many drugs, while the other may be less active, inactive or sometimes caused, causes adverse effects. So in drug discovery, drugs are typically composed of only one enantiomer to enhance efficiency and do away with other side effects. An example of this is Lunesta, which is made up of only the S enantiomer, which produces the desired effects while the R is inactive. In this video, we learned about the concept of chirality, how to name and label chiral molecules, a neat characteristic of chiral compounds, and why chirality matters to us. 
This is Zach Garrow, and I hope you enjoyed what you learned.